wheelchair lift, working cable car, a gazillion minifigures, lots of different rooms and shops, tons of references and easter eggs, crazy piece usage and last but not least, a working Lego flushing toilet. The new Lego Ninjago City Markets has it all and so much more. But before diving into it, the box art features the logo of the new Ninjago theme slash show, Dragons Rising, with a matching illustration on the interior flap here. In the back the usual features and functions highlights and to the other side the measurements of the set. For your reference it's built on top of two 32 by 32 base plates and is an antenna element taller than the Lego tall neck. The minifigure lineup has a whooping 21 characters included. The Sushimi Chef, Boat Vendor and Street Vendor, Borg Store Employee, Dojo Kid and T Vendor with a cool decoration on the torso element featuring a dragon on the front and back and the Baker as a new hat element I wasn't familiar with. Crazy thing was the set came with two of these. We have the new screw with Gail Gossip and Vinny Folson, Chamil, Verrett with an arm cast and Racer 7, clearly a Bionicle fan with with a Tahu mask torso and the actual Bionicle 8534 Tahu set on her hands, with the canister packaging as well. We also have the Marshal of the Ninjago City Police, Hound Dog McBrag, Tech Genius Cyrus Borg with his wheelchair and the Criminal Miss Demeanor with her flamethrowers. Finally, on the ninja side of things, there's Detective Zane and Blacksmith Kai holding a transparent orange katana, maybe a new piece is forging. There's also two of the new Dragon's Rising characters, Arin and Sora, and finally Laloid and Nia featuring these cool new elements for the head balaclavas. There's the top helmet and the bottom one which also holds the katanas in the back. The alternate head prints look really good. Onto the model itself, it's really impressive to look at, especially the cable car, that is probably the second most hyped detail about this whole thing, with the first being the flushing toilet for sure. The access to the cable car is made through this platform on the ground floor, with great access for the wheelchair with all the ramps. Loading and unloading passengers is a bit hard though, as there's limited space to handle the thing, at least for me with my big adult hands. At the top here there's a crank connected to a spool and string that needs to be turned to move the cable car up. I would have liked the gearing to be slightly different to allow for a faster movement, but it's okay. Now as the cable car is nearing the end of the trip, there's this platform in the way that needs to be raised like so, so that the trip comes to an end. Unloading passengers is way easier up here as there's more space to handle the minifigures. Afterwards you can get down using the stairs here or the wheelchair lift which is triggered by this simple yet clever mechanism. Back to the ground floor there's a lot to explore like the tea vendor stall, the boat vendor by the river or the street vendor over here. I need to highlight a new piece on the street vendor stall though, this weird window frame with a diagonal bar piece. Looks like an interesting element and there's a few black ones as well in this balcony up here. The bridge over the river is beautifully detailed with an interesting choice of elements, but what surprises me is the way it's angled perfectly to fit the LEGO system. In the corner there's the smithy and this shop here is the bakery, it is however much easier to see them from the back. Under the furnace here there's another new element that looks like a stove dial of sorts, at least that's how it was used in the bakery stove as well. I do like this a lot, that you slide out the entire bakery shop like this for easier access. Usually in Ninjago City sets you lift the entire floors to access the rooms, but in this case with the mechanisms up here that would be impossible while keeping everything working, so this solution is kinda great. Lots of things being baked here and the crazy thing for me is the use of the Harry Potter 1 boxes as steps for these stairs leading up to the bedroom above. Talk about nice park usage, right? The bedroom I mentioned also slides out in the same fashion as the bakery. To the side there's another bedroom, maybe Kai's, though to access this one we need to remove a wall rather than sliding out the whole thing. On the opposite side of the set there's the last shop of the ground floor, maybe a place that sells beauty products and perfumes. To access this one we remove the entire wall and I kinda like how the greens are growing outside of it and inside we can find another of those dial pieces but this time around in teal. In the levels above, next to the access to the cable car, lies the Borg store, selling cell phones and tech items. Through the back of this store, there's a simple lift mechanism that leads to what I believe to be Cyrus's office, due to the lack of chairs for people to sit. 
I quite like the brick-built red beam structure here and the overpass details leading to the karaoke club, like the Asian gate, the teal flower pots or the use of the garage door elements in transparent neon green for guardrails. This time around, to access the karaoke club, we do need to leave the entire floor though. There's the karaoke corner, a counter, a super clever build for the pool table and a jukebox on the corner here. There's also a dartboard on the wall that's a sticker and as you've probably guessed by now the set does feature a lot of them, 72 to be exact. Not surprising considering the norm for Ninjago City sets but a bit of a pain to place. Going around the back we get to the last floor for the tiny sushimi place with a cool brick built octopus on top, holding the fairly recent chopstick element and a new to me pot slash frying pan piece. And now we finally get to the highlight of the set, the toilet. Inside we have all of the details you would expect from such a room and the toilet seat weird shape was achieved with the use of two of these weird lego plates that are used in other lego sets to hang builds on a wall. The flushing toilet is however what you all want to see, right? Pushing this technique element here, down goes the lego poop, all the way to the river. The way it works however is pure genius. The trigger that we can better see in the back lowers this tile, making it so that the pieces go through this hole that leads to this void space in the back of the karaoke bar. From there it falls into this assembly built under the overpass, rolling down to this hole that runs inside the support over here that leads to the river. Wow! It's probably really weird being this excited about a working Lego toilet, but the truth is, I am, and once you try it out, you will be too. Removing all those layers of floors, we get to see Erin and Sora's room. Being a Ninjago City set means it can be connected to the previous three sets of this sub-theme. There's connection points on both sides of the build, though if you do it on this side at least, that will make it hard for the platform triggering mechanism to be accessed. The river matches both the style of the previous sets and the tedious process of putting it together, unfortunately, and the iconic Ninjago City railings with lots of stickers for signs are still here. That's another great thing about these sets, I feel, the amount of hidden references and easter eggs that make the building experience that much more enjoyable. There's a reference to Mindstorms 2.0 in this sticker here, Jay's Titan mech on this one, the Temple of Celebration set here, a bionicle reference on Racer 7's torso, the movie posters of this set reference the pirate's theme and the haunted house set from Monster Hunters, and there's a lot more that I probably missed, but my favorite has to be the missing ghost sign, a little nod to the lego goat element that was released once in a single lego set that fans have been asking lego to redo for years. Building techniques and clever piece usages are another great highlight for the ninjago city sets in my opinion. I've already covered all of the mechanisms, the angled bridge and the pool table, but the windows on the karaoke bar were also super clever, the sideways use of the fence element for windows, bright green katanas for plants, door elements, book elements or shields for roofs and awnings, but sometimes things as simple as clips turned upside down for flower pots really surprise me. What's also surprising is the price. With more than 6000 pieces, not counting the 200 plus extras, this set will only cost $370, which is completely bonkers. Similar piece count sets such as the Harry Potter Hogwarts Castle, Rivendell and the UCS Razor Crest cost $100 more at minimum. Having built all four of these, Ninjago City Markets offers the best value in my opinion, so if you're in doubt about getting any of these, Ninjago City Markets is the way to go. I personally really, really like it. Just make sure you have enough space to display it before buying it starting at June 4th. Use the links below to do so if you wish to support the channel and be sure to subscribe so you don't miss a ton of new LEGO set reviews coming up real soon.